Hello out there in YouTube and Google Plus land. Well, as you can see from the title, I got something new for you here. I'm going to be making new. This is what it's looking like before it starts. And this is basically what it's going to turn out to be is a beer can alcohol stove. So you can take one of these, turn it into this. If you want to find out how, just stick around. This is Surviving 2 coming to you with another video. Well, I can cut the beer bottle in a couple of different ways. I can use a pair of tin snips. I can use a hacksaw. Easiest way would be a chop saw. Yeah, how about that? How about that? That works good. There we go. I need to start thinking of a million dollars now. All right, we got that. I got my can already marked. There's a mark right in here, a couple of marks up here, and a couple of marks up there. Now the these two at the top, those are I'm going to cut on these outside lines and then trim down if I have to. This one is a pretty definite line right there, so I'm going to probably cut it first. Then I'll probably cut this one up here and then this one here, so that, that way I can have a flatter surface for the chop saw to work off of down here. Now I'll probably speed this up a little bit. Now that little pr puppy is probably hot. <laughs> so okay. Yeah, not too bad. The aluminum dissipated it pretty quick. Pull that little bracket out of there. Take and hold this up here, keep it square. Now then my next cut, tell you what, before I do that, I'm gonna take some measurements of all this and double check what I need for here to here. Down inside, I, uh, keep it in camera. Down inside of here, this bottom to up here, because that's where this is going to set all the way down in there. And I see already that I got to cut some of it off. So I'll have to figure out how much, and then we'll go from there. And I'll be right back to you. All right, I've got my mark here, it's right there. Measure twice, cut once. It's a good rule of thumb. Measure twice, cut once. That way you don't make a mistake. And if you do, you hopefully catch it. All right, I gotta be on that line right there. Okay, let's take the bottom portion of it. See if it fits a little better. Yeah, fits a lot better. So now when I go to squeeze the two of them together, it'll Hopefully this is going to go all the way down to the bottom of here and then that'll make a nice fairly tight seal and I'll put some stuff in between these two joints when I push it together. So next thing to do is cut some notches. I've got to cut four notches, two straight across from each other and then two straight the other way. And then knock all these burrs off that I've got on these edges so that that way everything will slip together a lot better. So let me get that done and I'll get back to you. Okay, I've got everything kind of sanded down and cleaned off. I took this and I took a file inside of it real gently and took all the burrs out of it. Now be real careful because these are sharp pieces. Then I took some emery cloth and I did the inside, did this side, and did that one. Got that one all done. The neck of this one is all done. Took a file to the four corners of this. If you can see, I can't see it on the viewfinder, but hopefully you can. Took a file inside of it also and around the outside, knocked all the burrs out, and then smoothed it down with that. Then I take it and I've test fitted it together so that I know it kind of fits and it's flat in there. Get it on my line. I've already marked my line on there. 
that's pretty much it so down in the very bottom of it down in there it should be flat against that bottom which doesn't matter a whole lot I mean it just give it more ways for fuel to get up into this chamber over here and start boiling up and everything and then it'll come out the jets when I cut the jets into it so now all I got to do is take that and I'm going to put some I'm thinking some RTV silicone sealant some high temp sealant and put it on there then slide the two of them together and make sure they're force fit together real good and they're pretty much on my line then once that completely sets up I'll be done with the chop saw because I can take it and cut that section kind of even with it and make it good from there then all I got to do is come back around and, and drill a bunch of holes around here where the neck where this neck starts tapering I'm going to drill them down in about here it's about a half an inch below this lip down into this edge here of where I want it so let me get some RTV sealant get that done up and I'll show you how that all works all right I gotta do this quick because I didn't have any silicone I did have some epoxy so what I'm going to do is, and I just put it on the lip, inside the lip right there. And I'm going to take and shove this together. Come on. And do it very carefully. And then check and see how level it is and how straight it is. And the way I'm going to do that is with a square here. So I'm a little bit off. Not bad. Not bad. Real bad. So I need to come that way with it just a small amount. See if I'm on. Nope. Still not. Let's see if that did it. Nope. Still a little off. There. I felt it move that time. Let's see if I moved it enough. And not bad, better than what it was. All sides are about the same. It's going to be pretty good. Once I level it up with the chop saw, once I cut it off, then it'll be good. Okay, now I just got to let this set for 24 hours. And main thing is that epoxy is in there for a seal to seal this upper portion so no gases come out there hopefully that's good and sealed now and the only gases will come out where I drill the vents so that'll have to set for a day and then I'll get back with you on the rest of it all right it's been 24 hours since I put this thing together and now it's it's hardened up so now I get to go ahead and cut this portion of it here off and go ahead and keep this and I'm gonna end up using the chop saw again One thing before I get started, the I'm not going to press hard on this. I'm going to rotate it so that it cuts it evenly and so it hopefully doesn't break this epoxy seal. Well, there we go. We're cut down to where we need to be. I got this piece left over. 
which I can use for odd and end stuff. And one thing I forgot to say is when it was together, you all saw me trying to push it together like that. Well, I eventually turned it over and pushed on the smooth portion up here. That way I wasn't pushing on a raw edge. So that way I could push it together. Now I'll just take a file and some more sandpaper and emery cloth and sand that down. Then all I gotta do is put in my holes. I'll uh, show you more about that when I get going on that. So stick around, I'll be right back. All right, first I took this after it and I got it most of the paint off of it. The reason why I did that is so that I could actually see my marks when I go to make the holes around it. And then I took some scotch Sprite to it and just rubbed it real good and got the rest of it for the most part off. So now when I put my marks on there, I can find where my holes are and it's gonna be a little easier. I got the top settled down. It's all smooth. Nothing rough in there now. I took another uh, device and checked the roundness or the thickness of it, I guess you could say, and found out it was a little high on one side and down on the other, so I leveled that out and made it level. So hang on, and I'll put some holes in it and show you how I'm doing that. I'll be right back. All right, I've got my line marked around it. And you can see I just took masking tape and put on there temporarily. And how I did it was with that stuff down there. Set it down like that. Stacked stuff up till I could take my marker and hold it on that line and get it right. Now it took several, several different things. CD-ROM discs, uh, carriers and all that put it on there and then I just spun this around to make my mark. So now I gotta take and stick 16 holes in that thing. So I've gotta count out the eight going around it and then do eight in between each one of those and that should get me. We'll find out in just a second. I'll be right back. All right, here we go. I got them all marked on there. Now, you do the first four, you kind of put one in one spot and then you look opposite and you put that and then you just try and eyeball it and put the other ones here halfway between and the other one halfway between. Then it becomes really easy. You can look at your marks and kind of gauge midway, put another mark, roll it, do it again till you get all the way around. Then you come back in between each one of those marks midway and put another one. And that gets you your 16 holes. So I'll get those little puppies drilled out. And the drill bit I'm going to be using, I'm not exactly sure what size it is. I haven't tried to gauge it, but it's one that fit into this stove right here. And it's a pretty tight fit, but it does fit into there. There we go. I got that end in, so I'm gonna use these. I know this stove works really good, so I'm gonna match this one to this one. We'll see how it goes. Be right back. Well, all right, I got all the holes drilled. Now comes the reveal. Figure out which way my tape's going. Stuck to my finger. There we go. Ditch the tape. Take this and rub it and get any of the burrs off of it. Also probably get some mineral spirits and go over it and get rid of some of the glue that's from the tape. But that should be it. That should be a workable stove now. So 
I'm not going to have time today to do it myself, so I'll do it again in, in a day or so when I get some time. But that won't matter to y'all. Y'all going to see it in just a second. So stick around. All right, then I'm back. And as you see, I've got the stove sitting there. Stove. Yeah, stove sitting there. And I've got the cup sitting there. I've got one cup of water in there. Ah, play on words. I was going to go ahead and make this for dinner, but I've come to find out it's two servings. So that's not so good since how I'm only one person. And here's something else I'm working on making. I'll show you more details about that later. But let's get this little beast fired off and get it to going and see how long it takes to cook that or boil that one cup of water there. Now these particular stoves, it takes a while for them to start up until they get warmed up. They're burning internally. They're not coming out the jets on the outside yet. Oh, one other quick thing real quick I gotta get handy. A uh, fire extinguisher, just in case. Put it over here where I can get to it a little better. I don't have to reach across the fire to get to it. Now I'm not gonna know the burn time on this thing until I do the video and see the video because I'm gonna stick a timer clock up in one of the corners of the video while it's doing its thing and then I'll know how fast it burns and hopefully it's gonna be around a two minute two minute burn or something like that let's see if it's caught any of the outer jets on fire yet nope not quite yet it's still working on it oh yeah there they go I see them lit up now so okay so now I can put it on there we'll start the timer and see where we go from here. Almost there. There it is. We got a boil. Now, one thing about this stove, I can't snuff it. I don't think. Hang on just a second. Let me try something here. Got a regular tin can. We'll see if that will snuff it out. Normally you got to let them burn till all the fuel is gone. Yeah, I did it. Woohoo! That's the start of my uh, gasifier. It's one of the cans to it. So, yeah, I burned it. I don't know how long it took. I'm using denatured alcohol here. And you saw that I turned the light out. So you could see how the jets were coming out. They were doing real good. And one nice thing about this thing is you can set right on top of it. I need to have a windscreen around it when I use it outside. But in indoors, oh, that little puppy's hot even that far up. Wow. But using it like that, it works really good. As you saw, I got some good flames coming out of it. So I think it's a success. I don't know what the burn time was on it, but I'm pretty sure it's in par with the other stove I've got that's like this. Now the only difference in this stove and the other one is sound 
and I'll let you hear that in just a second. I think the other one has got something packed in side of it. This is the one put inside the other. So I think there's something packed in there. I didn't put anything in here, so give me a second. I'll grab the other one and come right back. Okay, went and got my other cook kit. This is my hobo stove. This is where I keep the other, other one at for right now open it up I don't even know if this is in frame or not and eh, you're not seeing all of it but you'll see it in a second once I get it out of here all right that's all the fuel and stuff I got in here and there's the other one so you stick all this stuff yeah just stick it off to the side <coughs> excuse me all right now if you listen You can hear the difference in the sound. I don't know. It's almost like there's there's a different sound in the two of them. Yeah, hear this? Compared to that, that one sounds like something's inside there. It could be. I didn't put any in mine. I had some rock wool to put in there, but once I got the epoxy mixed up for the top of it, I went. <laughs> I was in a hurry to get it into there, and I didn't think about putting the rock wool in there. If I make another one, I might do that. So, anyway, there it is. That's the newest stove I got going on, and they're easy to make. Maybe if y'all want to, y'all link making one to this video I'll be glad to watch yours all right until the next one y'all take care out there later I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it if you want to see more in the future that I put out just subscribe until then later